Hello everybody, I'm Peter, the developer of Horizon, and I want to share a few tips regarding tree placement. At the moment I'm working on a, a side-scroller example, 2.5D side-scroller, and I'm in the process of placing trees on this. So what I did here is I created a strip with Horizon, where we can move the camera along in this way and I disabled uh, uh, the further away parts, duplicated it and created uh, colliders for this. Uh, the way how you create colliders um, is not really tricky. So if you make a duplicate of your horizon, you go down here and click Bake Displacement into Meshes and then you basically uh, select uh, the components and remove everything apart uh, uh, mesh filter, add mesh colliders. So if we look in here, we see um, when you add a mesh collider and there is a mesh filter before, um, the mesh will be automatically um, assigned. So after you have added a mesh collider, you can remove these uh, mesh filters as well. So what you're left with then is yeah, a set of colliders that you can um, take out and put into the original uh, horizon where you take the duplicate from. These colliders are important so the tree placement works. So I've placed already uh, quite a few trees and for placing trees in the scene view it's a good idea to disable the light and the fog and as you can see the trees are uh, very hard to, to see. So what I do is I select the material of the trees and just put the diffuse multi uh, to three temporarily so we can see the trees better. And there is one uh, thing that in the most cases is ideal uh, when, when placing trees and that is that the trees are oriented always towards the scene origin. But in this case of the side scroller, this is a little bit tricky. So I show you um, what you can do. I start a new uh, tree group and paint a little bit here and uh, explain what my my workflow is. So create a new tree group, and here I have a big area where we see all these dark spots, and it's it's good to to place trees always on these dark spots because here for example in the satellite image we see the trees are actually here so i want to place the trees also on that spot because it will look more natural because when you place a tree just here in the field it may look good for for individual trees but if you just put a forest there it doesn't look good so place forest always on these dark parts also here where we have a lot of uh, dark spots, we can just scatter. So I put the probability all the way down, put the uh, tree distance to, to five, and we can put it even higher, but I think this will be good. The steepness, maybe lower a little bit, so we do not paint too much on cliffs or so. And then I just scatter, and you see the trees are oriented towards the scene origin, so I need to turn the camera up. Uh, we can see the trees better. So, just scatter them where all these dark spots are also scattered. And if there are less dark spots, I just place fewer trees. And also, the further away from the camera, uh, the fewer trees I'll place, so we do not waste a lot of polys in the in the distance. Here we have a lot of dark spots, so here I can put more dense forests. So this looks good. Um, now I can uh, lower the brush size and, and go for more dense areas and do a little bit more detailed work. On the ridges, um, it looks quite good to place a few extra trees. Here 
here is a, a lot of dark um, spots on the ground texture. I'll place more here. And you can see that the trees that are placed before they are oriented all already um, along the c-axis. So I can see where I'm actually painting what's what's the current uh, tree group. So here we have uh, quite a lot closer to the camera. It makes sense to place more trees. And now we go to the more interesting parts where I increase the probability to one and put the brush size to uh, one. Then I start to paint in these. Uh, little forest strips of the satellite image. And yeah, uh, since the, the diffuse of the trees is so bright now, we can really see what we did. If you just leave the diffuse on one, the trees will blend so good that you have a hard time seeing where you have already painted. So here the steepness limit is maybe too strong. Here are a few scattered ones, get a nice transition. And the same goes for buildings. When I, when I place buildings, I try to place them in proximity to the street or even directly on houses that are already in the satellite image. It can take some time to fill a horizon, but you're not doing that very often. And so it pays off to spend a little bit extra time here because, yeah, the visual difference is quite big. And it makes sense to, as an artist, to spend the time there where it's doing a lot of impact. Here we have a big forest area, so we can have a high probability and a bigger brush size and, and just put the trees in. Here as well. We'll bring the brush size down, maybe paint the outlines a little bit more exact. Here are a few scattered dark spots, so I placed trees on them. Because these dark spots look a little bit like uh, yeah, baked shadows or ambient occlusion below the tree. So we can use that. If we have it already in there, why not use it? As an artist, you're, if you're an experienced artist, you, you know you have to embrace limitations and make the best of what you got. If there is already something, we, we should use it. We see, okay, our word count, we're close to the end of this mesh, and I want to have this group roughly uh, a square. So we need to budget within each group a little bit. And we, we still have a little bit of room here to place more individual trees. When you hold shift, you can delete any trees that you have accidentally placed. And you can also place some individual ones now and then. It looks quite okay. Along the streets, usually you have some kind of bushes and trees on the side. So it's, it's a good idea to place trees on the side of the streets. So look. We got, yeah, we probably want to scatter the rest of the trees here. So, finish this area here. Here we need some more little ones.
Yeah, I think this looks quite good. Here we have a very dark area. There as well. Okay, I think the rest will place with high brush size and low probability. And let's scatter them. Maybe lower the steepness. We do not paint too much on cliffs. And here we have a lot of bright uh, grass. So we do not want to place too many trees on it. Here is dark grass, so here we can use more trees. So, almost full with the mesh. We have a nice area. In case the mesh is full before we have a nice shape, like now, we can of course delete a few trees. Overall I think it looks good, but maybe here we can remove a few and leave that for the next tree group. I think like this, maybe even more. Okay. And now we can spend these remaining trees to make some areas more denser. With a smaller brush size, higher probability, and then I just look for these dark spots and try to increase the density. this group is full and what I do now before I close the group is since we are working on this 2.5D side scroller and our camera is always pointing along the c-axis um, we need to uh, remove the rotation from the trees or put in the correct rotation so I select the group and you can see When you have it selected, the unity becomes slow because all of these uh, colliders. So what I do now, uh, I could just open a group and select all the children manually, but there are, um, I think, 16,000 trees in there or so. So I make it a little bit easier because I have snazzy grid. I just click on the hierarchy down button and it will take a while. Unity has to handle all these objects and soon we should see um, the inspector changing and having all these thousands of trees selected. When Unity is unresponsive I always uh, move my mouse um, over the toolbar here to see if um, it's responsive again because when when it's working and you click around to see if 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 you can do something you might screw things up funny though that unity takes so long to select that many objects because i can with the script i can combine these trees in one second or so but apparently unity has trouble selecting all these So now here we are. So we can see all these transform um, position, rotation, and scale. They are all different. So I click in the Y rotation of these trees. Type in 180. Come on, Unity. I hit Enter. And then I select the parent again, where we could just scroll up and click here or if we have snazzy tools we can just click hierarchy up and now we can close this group and click on continue painting 
and close the current tree group and combine. And now it's combined with the corrected rotation and Unity is responsive again. So we can continue working. So I think with one more mesh, I have this entire strip uh, painted. I will just work along and <clears throat> give you a time lapse. Oh, let's do it. So I finished the last uh, tree group, so I select the tree material again and put the diffuse multi to one and put all my tree groups that I created inside the parent. So we have in total for this strip, that is many, many kilometers, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, eight tree groups. Can see that's that's plenty of trees. So probably a good time to check out how it looks in play mode. If I enable the rest of horizon. The colliders I can deactivate. I don't need them anymore. And I can enable the lighting and the fog. And I hit play. Yeah, it looks nice. And oh, I shouldn't right click. This will screw my camera because this um, camera controller is still set up for the example scene. So I need to put my camera back where it was. Um, probably up. And uh, we don't want to zoom. Yeah, and we have I think minus 7500 we can start and then we can move the camera a long long distance until plus 7500 15 kilometers room for side scrolling so you can use it for a uh, side scroller bullet hell with an airplane or just a platformer where you have some crazy parallaxing you can even move the camera up and down and it still looks looks cool you can rotate the camera and you can of course still play with the lighting In a real production you would put some image effects like color correction and so on top. <clears throat> but this is completely without image effects. So what I would do with the image effects in this case, um, probably put a little bit more contrast and brightness in. Also I didn't place any buildings yet, so. But I'm quite happy with the look. I think in total this was a 
one hour of effort. Yeah, and this gives a fantastic background for a side-scroller. Just need to put the foreground in and yeah, put it on Steam and sell it and get rich. <laughs> I wish you good luck with that. Um, yeah, the final result I will um, put in a separate video where I go in detail about doing side-scrollers and probably also I do infinite runners and whatnot. There is there are countless possibilities with Horizon. Maybe add some fog. Oh yeah, that's, that looks nice. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and we can still put zoom in and it still looks very good. So you can see Horizon is not only for having a square single terrain in the middle, you can be totally creative, you can also use like uncommon uh, terrains, terrain shapes, like having it 10 by 2 or whatever. Horizon is super flexible and I hope I can illustrate that to you, so I hope this will encourage you to think a little bit outside of the box and see what you can achieve with Horizon. Trying a few different perspectives here. Maybe try some snow. Maybe a little bit of front lighting. Yeah, there are plenty of possibilities to get different moods. Okay, so much for tree placement. I hope you liked this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And see you soon.